Chapter 7 discusses the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Okay, in this uh, chapter, we're going to talk a lot about the electron. And uh, we know that the electron is located outside the nucleus of the atom. But the electron and light energy have a lot in common. So first, let's talk about, in Chapter 6, we focused on energy in the form of heat. Energy can also be in the form of light. So energy can be transferred between atoms and molecules in the form of light or electromagnetic energy. Okay, and in section 7.2 and 7.3, we're going to combine concepts from there that relate to this. Okay, so energy can be transferred between atoms and molecules in the form of light or electromagnetic energy. Light has many characteristics in common with electrons. Okay, which is why after we go through this introduction, we're going to talk a lot about the electrons. Light energy, again, as electromagnetic radiation, the terms are synonymous, carries energy through space by means of waves, okay? Uh, waves are oscillations that move outward from some kind of disturbance. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about light energy um, in the idea of waves. Let's look at some characteristics of waves. Okay, so make sure... We have amplitude, we have frequency, and we have wavelength. Those three terms we're going to define. The amplitude is related to the intensity or the brightness of the radiation. Frequency okay, The Greek letter nu is used to uh, denote frequency. It looks like a, a script V. Okay, frequency is the number of cycles per second. Okay, how frequently, which uh, periodicity something occurs. So number of cycles per second and we're going to see that uh, frequency is usually reported in units of reciprocal seconds or called Hertz And then wavelength, represented by the Greek letter lambda. Okay, it looks like a wave, right? Looks like a kind of like an upside down uh, V with a little uh, swoosh going up. It, it looks like a wave. Okay, the peak to peak dis distance. And the peak is the maximum amplitude. Okay, and I'm going to make a little drawing here to help define these terms a little bit better. So the peak is the maximum amplitude. And the, the opposite, the peak would be the, the top, okay, the maximum amplitude. 
and the trough will be the minimum amplitude. I'm going to make a little drawing here to help better define uh, these terms. Okay, the amplitude would be this height right here, okay? The wavelength would be this distance here, okay? All right, so this, the top here would be uh, the peak. Okay, the trough would be here, okay, and the frequency is how many cycles you have in that time unit of a second. So let's say that just this representative um, drawing here represented one second. Okay, let's say that was from zero, and let me expand this out a little bit, okay. And let's say that right here was one second, okay? So then we would say that we have a frequency of two cycles per second, okay? Okay. Or two hertz, okay? We have one two identical cycles in that one second time frame, okay? These terms, lambda and frequency, are related to one another, okay? Related to one another by the speed of light. You know, light travels very quickly. Light travels at a speed of three times 10 to the eighth meters Per second. Okay, so light travels that distance in only one second. When you have a thunderstorm, you have lightning and thunder, you see the lightning right away. But then the thunder, there's a delay with that because the uh, speed of sound is a lot slower than the speed of light. Okay, the speed of sound is uh, about 340 meters per second, okay, versus the speed of light which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So these terms are mathematically uh, related by the speed of light. So that's what we're gonna see um, in the next equation. Okay, the next, okay. So we don't wanna lose our focus here, okay? Electrons behave or have similar characteristics that light does. So that's why we go into this description about uh, light energy, because the electrons behave similar to it. Light has many characteristics in common with electrons, okay? So that's why we're starting off talking a lot about light energy, and then we're going to go into electrons. Okay, so these wave characteristics related by the equation okay. wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. So wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light, okay, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per
per second. Okay. Now, a lot of times we see this equation written other ways, too. Okay. We sometimes see it in reference to frequency. Okay, frequency equals the speed of light over the wavelength. Sometimes we see it written in reference to wavelength. Wavelength equals the speed of light over the frequency. Okay. Wavelength is typically in units of nanometers. Uh, so we sometimes uh, see that we have to convert from nanometers to meters in order to do conversions with this equation because the speed of light is in units of meters per second. The frequency is in hertz, which is reciprocal seconds, so we have the seconds built into the unit of hertz for frequency, but wavelengths a lot of times are given in nanometers, so we're going to see that we need to do um, some conversions, um, converting nanometers to meters and vice versa. So wavelengths are typically reported in units of nanometers. Okay. But need to be converted to meters because of the speed of light units. So wavelengths are typically reported in units of nanometers, but need to be converted to meters because of the speed of light unit. And just to remember that one meter is equal to 10 to the ninth nanometers. Okay, if there's a, those of you that like the negative exponents, 10 to the negative ninth meters equals one nanometer. Okay, whichever way you like to remember it by, okay? I like to think of the large unit um, and have the smaller units, you know, I like it without the negative exponents, but I know some of you prefer the other way. But just to um, one meter, okay, one meter, all right, has one billion nanometers. If you took this meter stick, okay, top to bottom, and you broke it into one billion units, okay, you'd have one billion 10 to the ninth nanometers, okay? This, the, the meters, the large unit, the nanos, the smaller unit. You need to make sure whichever conversion factor you use is, is correct, okay? You don't have a billion meters. You don't have one billion of these in one little teeny tiny nanometer, okay? So it's 10 to the negative ninth if you want to use negative exponents. All right, let's do some... Um, uh, problems with this uh, equation here. Let's find the wavelength okay, of a laser beam with a frequency of 4.32 times 10 to the 14th reciprocal seconds, 
okay, or it hurts, okay. That is used to remove black and blue pigments in tattoo ink. So um, laser um, tattoo removal is a, is a technique that's used with one of the only techniques really available um, to remove a, a tattoo. So the way that they, it works is that whatever color the pigment is in the tattoo, um, a laser beam of a contrasting color, okay, would be used to, uh, would be directed at that uh, at that tattoo to break up the, the pigment particles so that they could uh, be broken down into smaller molecules so that they're just uh, excreted as waste. Um, you know, laser uh, tattoo removal is pretty costly um, and especially it's very painful because, uh, you know, the, it, it's basically, uh, you know, the, it's, it's, it's removing that ink that is in the second layer of the skin. But uh, this is this is a real scenario here, okay? So we find the wavelength of a laser beam with a frequency of this value that is used to remove black and blue pigments in tattoo ink. Okay, so we want to find the wavelength. So the wavelength equals the speed of light over the frequency, okay? The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and the frequency is 4.32 times 10 to the 14th reciprocal seconds okay so those units would cancel out okay we would do our math okay remember this is one number divided by the other number okay make sure you enter it into your calculator correctly and you would do this and you would get 6.94 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Okay. Now, if, if we needed to convert this into nanometers, because once we start to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, the uh, visible part of the spectrum, which is what we see with our eyes, okay, this value in meters really uh, won't do much for us. So let's convert this to nanometers. Convert final answer to nanometers, okay? So 6.94 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. You have 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. Units of meters would cancel out and you would be left with 694 nanometers. Okay, well, and this actually will correlate to the, um, about red, the color red. So a red laser is actually used to remove black and blue tattoo pigments. Okay, so this would actually be red visible light, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. I just wanna show some math problems here um, before I get into a little bit more background with the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. All right, let's do a problem where we need to find frequency, okay? We did a problem where we had to find wavelength. Let's do a problem where we have to find the frequency now. So let's do a problem with ultraviolet light, okay? So ultraviolet light comes from the sun and there are three categories of ultraviolet light, okay? You have um, UVA rays, 
UVB and UVC rays. And the UVB and the UVC ultraviolet rays are the ones that are most detrimental. And the ozone layer actually blocks about 95% um, of them. Um, so the UVA rays, which are actually the longer, the longer ones, um, they're the ones that actually uh, reach here, reach the earth. And then about a small percentage of the shorter UV rays reach the earth. And uh, they're the ones that cause um, you know, changes in skin pigment, um, such as sunburn, and in um, you know, extreme cases, uh, skin cancer. So let's do a problem with ultraviolet um, wavelengths. Okay. UV radiation. mostly blocked by the ozone layer. About 5% of UVB and UVC rays reach Earth. are responsible for sunburns and skin cancers. Find the frequency in hertz, okay, which is reciprocal seconds, for a UV wavelength, for a UV B wavelength of 295 nanometers. Make that five look nicer. Okay. So UVB wavelength at 295 nanometers. Okay. And we want to find its frequency. Okay. So the frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. Now, the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But we have a wavelength given to us in nanometers. So we need to convert the nanometers to meters, so then when we put it into this equation, the meters cancel out so that we wind up with frequency units of reciprocal seconds, which are the same as hertz. Okay, so before we do anything with this equation, first convert the wavelength to meters. Okay, so 295 nanometers. Okay, in one meter, we have 10 to the ninth nanometers. Okay, so units of nano will cancel out, and then we would have for the um, equivalent meters, we'd have 2.95 times 10 to the negative, what is it, 6, 7, yeah, yeah, 7, negative 7 meters. Okay, so we need this UVB wavelength in units of meters so that when we put it into this equation we will have the meters cancel out to give us the units of hertz which is reciprocal seconds so now we want to plug in frequency is equal to the speed of light over lambda in meters the speed of light So the units of meters cancel out, and we have reciprocal seconds, okay? So 
So our frequency is 1.02 times 10 to the 15th reciprocal seconds or hertz, okay? Reciprocal seconds and hertz are the same thing. So I've mentioned UV light, I've mentioned visible light. Let's put this into the context of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, okay? Visible light and UV light are just a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? Of electromagnetic radiation, okay, light energy, which remember, electrons have a lot of characteristics with light. electron discussion is coming in a future video. Okay. Electromagnetic spectrum. encompasses all forms of electromagnetic radiation. Okay. You have on figure seven five page 302 of your textbook shows you the electromagnetic spectrum. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. Right here. Okay. So you see the, the rainbow there. That's the visible spectrum. That's what we see with our eyes. That's only a very tiny portion of the electromagnetic radiation that exists. You'll see on the one end that you have the short waves, okay? Let's try and look backwards here. And you have the long waves, okay? So you have things such as the uh, X-rays, gamma rays, okay? Which are very short uh, waves, okay? But they have high frequency. And because of their high frequency, they actually, um, can do more changes than these longer waves over here, like radio waves and microwaves, okay, which have a, a, a lower frequency and they have a longer wavelength. But these radio waves, okay, we use them all the time. Every time you pick up your cell phone, okay, and you, you do something with it, okay, you use the internet, you call somebody, you text somebody, that's all working off of radio frequency, okay? Let me draw a little picture up here on the board. Uh, it's very similar to this chart, but it, not as uh, colorful as this chart. But I need to emphasize some points.
Okay. So the low energy, so frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. We could see that from the equation that we had up where we had lambda times nu equals the speed of light. Okay, those these two parameters are inversely proportional. One increases, the other decreases. Okay, energy is in accordance with frequency. If the frequency is lower, the energy is lower. If the frequency is higher, the energy is higher. So the portions of the electromagnetic spectrum that have low energy would be things like the radio waves. Microwaves. Okay. And those waves that have higher energy are things like the gamma rays. Okay, gamma rays um, can cause cancers, but you know what? They're actually even used to treat cancers. Okay, when you have those different isotopes that have, um, you know, that are, are radioisotopes, okay, they're, they usually contain gamma rays or x-rays, okay? X-rays, you know, we use x-rays, okay, technetium-99 is one of the isotopes that's used to get imaging uh, for, uh, for x-rays, okay? But these are shorter wavelengths, higher frequency, okay? So if you have a lot of them, they, they can do more damage, but in small amounts, they actually are, are very helpful for, um, you know, a lot of uh, medical purposes. Next, you have UV rays, okay? You have here the UV rays, okay? And then right next to the UV rays, you have a very small portion, which is the visible, the visible rays. This is what we see. We see from 400 to 700 nanometers. Okay, that's all that we see with our eyes. This very small portion. Okay, so the UV rays here, the ones that are shorter are the ones that are, that are closer um, coming towards the X-rays, the, the UVB and UVC rays. They're the ones that can cause uh, cancer. But the UVA rays, okay, aren't as, you know, don't have the same effect because they're closer to the visible rays. And then in between the visible and the microwave, you had infrared, IR, infrared waves. Okay, so the, the chart in your book actually, you know, is a lot neater, but I want to, I want to explain it. Okay. So I have this drawing here. Okay, the chart in the book gives you uh, numbers for things, okay. Um, I'm sorry, this is actually 750. 750, sorry. Okay. Okay. If we look at the visible range... Four hundred nanometers we have the color purple. Going down to four hundred and fifty or going up, sorry we have red. So, actually I should probably should have these reversed. Let me just reverse them because these are higher wavelength. OK, 
okay, and then all the colors in between, okay, red, um, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, okay, remember uh, Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, okay, or purple, are in between there, okay. Now, the electromagnetic radiation that comes in any of these forms, okay, from the longer wavelengths to the uh, shorter wavelengths, okay, they can be viewed as a stream of photons. And a photon is a packet of light. It's a quantized packet of energy. Remember, light is energy. Right. Let me just put this here, cell phones. And just in case you ever wonder, why you don't get a certain reception in certain areas. If you don't have a cell phone tower installed, then the cell phone can't get that signal. Like if you go up to the Poconos, you have the mountains, you have fewer cell phone towers versus if you're here in Philly where you have many cell phone towers. If you go down the shore, you don't have as many cell phone towers because one side you have the ocean. You can't put a cell phone tower in the ocean. Um, so the cell phones work off getting the radio signals from the different cell phone towers and in the city, you have pretty much continuous service, um, you know, pretty much most of the time because you have all of these cell phone towers transmitting radio waves. You go in an area where it's rural or where, you know, you have limited cell phone towers like a shore point. Okay, then, you know, that, that service goes out the door because you don't have the transmission of these radio waves. And I'm just talking about this as an example because, you know, we're so reliant on our cell phones nowadays. Um, just uh, helps to know a little bit more information about how we get that service. Okay, um, so photons and um, quantized energy. Okay, a couple more concepts for this video, and then I'm going to stop it, and the next video will be few, um, more uh, terms. Photons, okay? Not protons, photons, okay? Packets of light. Okay. Quantized packet of energy. quantized an amount a definite amount okay the energy of a photon is proportional to the radiation's frequency and a scientist uh, Max Planck is credited for this concept So the energy of a photon, E, the energy,
equals h times nu. Okay, where nu is the frequency. You say, well, what's h? h is Planck's constant. And that has a value of 6.625 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. Okay, remember here, this is frequency. Frequency has units of reciprocal seconds, okay, which are hertz. Okay, so the seconds cancel out and you're left with joules, which is a unit for energy. So the energy of this light okay, is related to its frequency and Planck's constant. All right, we're not going to do any calculations with that. I just want to uh, explain that concept there, okay? Atomic spectroscopy and the Bohr model. Okay, Bohr had a model of the atom where the electrons traveled in orbits, okay, distinct paths. And uh, we're going to see that uh, quantum mechanics uh, proved that wrong, but there's still some concepts from Bohr's model that uh, are relevant, okay? Um, spectra are used in the analysis of elements and compounds uh, from simple spectra to more complex methods of spectroscopy. Basically, every single element and compound has a unique spectrum because each is unique itself, okay? The numbers of uh, protons and electrons, okay, make um, it unique. Atomic line spectra are evidence that electrons and atoms have quantized or specific amounts of energy. They are a series of lines of distinct colors. For instance, if you were to have neon gas, okay, look at a neon sign, and you see it has that distinct uh, reddish color to it. If you were to look at neon gas and you would see that it's, it's line spectra, you would have lines in the red visible spectrum, yellow, green, and purple, okay, in these ranges here. But if you had hydrogen gas and you were to look at a line spectra for hydrogen, you would see only red and purple lines at distinct wavelengths, okay? Here I'm just giving you the ranges, okay? So a line spectra, you have some pictures in your book of those in figure 7, 11, 7, 13, and 7, 15. Okay. Figure 7, 11, 7, 13, and 7, 15 show you examples of line spectra, or sometimes they're called emission uh, spectrum. Okay. Or emissions, I'm sorry, emission spectra. Okay. There was a scientist at Rydberg that um, developed an equation to help explain atomic spectra. And it's based on the spectra of hydrogen, which is the simplest element because it has only one electron. And it's based off of the uh, energy levels that it is excited uh, to and from. Um, so we have line spectra. And the Rydberg equation.
the simplest. Because it has only one electron. do any calculations with the Rydberg equation, but I just want to mention that term in um, here in the notes. A continuous spectrum, we would see with incandescent light, okay, continuous unbroken distribution of light of all colors, okay, so all the colors come through. You do not have any distinct lines. If you have fluorescent light, Okay, that's made up of, uh, a fluorescent light bulb is made up of different, um, different elements that are um, giving off their, uh, you know, giving off the gas. So you see different distinct lines. But if you have an incandescent light, you'll see all the colors of the visible spectrum blended together. Simple would give line spectra. Okay. And these two sections, there are a lot of terms. There's a lot of terms that are even um, related to concepts in physics and in physical chemistry. So what I'm trying to do in these two sections is pull out what is important to explain further concepts in Chem 121. So you'll see when you're reading through these sections, there's going to be a lot of terms that um, you know, or you may even see equations that I didn't mention because I don't want you to worry about them for this course. Okay, I'm just trying to pull together the terms that you'll need to at least have heard that will um, be beneficial for this course and Chem 122. Um, another term that comes up is the photoelectric effect. Okay. Now remember, at the very start of this video, you said that light has um, many characteristics in common with electrons. And I want to leave you with that last thought because the subsequent video, we're going to um, be back to talking about electrons. But we want to remember that the electrons and the way that light energy behaves, they have a lot of similar characteristics. So the photoelectric effect, many metals emit electrons when light shines upon them. Electrons that are emitted when the energy of the photon okay, the light packet exceeds the energy with which the electron is held to the metal.
okay? And so I want to leave this video with this concept of, uh, again, un uniting or comparing the electron to light, okay? Because they behave in similar ways. Okay, so this concludes summary of sections 7, 2, and 7, 3. Okay, we're going to pick up in the next video with section 7, 5. If you'd like to read section 7, 4, for your own background knowledge, you certainly can. It won't hurt. Um, the, uh, De Broglie wavelength uncertainty principle, uh, Heisenberg, yeah, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But we're not going to um, do any of that math with wave functions and uh, Schrodinger equation. That's physical chemistry. That's not Chem 121 topics, okay? So we're going to end this video here, and we're going to start off with uh, section 7.5, um, which has some terms that you're probably familiar with from Chem 110, and uh, we'll start there. All right.